Planet of Lana is a cinematic, puzzle-centric 2D platformer with a strong focus on stealth, timing, and finding the correct sequence of events. It's also surprisingly story-heavy and easily readable, despite using few understandable words, relying instead on the presentation, animations, symbols, and color cues. You take control of the titular Lana, living in a peaceful but primitive-looking human settlement on an otherworldly planet. After an exciting dash through the town, chasing her sister into the surrounding hills, the sky darkens and arachnid-looking robots descend to capture her sister, the other villagers, and even the native wildlife. One desperate pursuit later, she stumbles upon and frees a cat-like creature, whom you can stroke as often as you want, which seems to share features with both the robotic threat and the local wildlife. She names it Mew, and together they set off to free the world from subjugation in an adventure that feels indebted to both another world and flashback, as they brave hostile environments, avoid skittering robots and gruesome wildlife, and uncover the history of her people and the machines on the way. To its credit, Planet of Lana never feels woefully opaque about the story elements, even if it does get a little weirder in the final hour. There are ten shrines with mural pieces secreted away in each chapter, but you don't need to find them to understand the history of the planet and the nature of the threat by the time the credits roll. An instrumental part of the storytelling is the beautiful, almost oil paint style visuals that are paired with intricate animations and an evocative soundtrack. The visual style relies on blending vibrant colors and textures for natural areas, while the machine workshops and ships are all about hard lines, angular shadows, and desaturated colors. Thanks to smart visual design, neither the lack of voice work or written objectives impact the gameplay flow to a great degree, though an option to highlight all interactive elements on screen would certainly improve accessibility. You will sometimes need to keep an eye out for background clues or patterns in adjacent areas, but most puzzles are self-contained and task you with observing patrol patterns, detection ranges, interconnected switches, and finding objects that Lana or Mew can manipulate. Timing your movements and ensuring the correct sequence of events, be that pulling switches or ordering the cat around as a distraction, is paramount to success, as any mistake will see you back at the last generously placed checkpoint in a heartbeat. As you progress, Mew gains the ability to manipulate some of the weird, wonderful and often terrifying wildlife, while Lana can eventually control machines to ferry the cat around or deal with the hostile wildlife. Puzzles demonstrate a decent mix of designs and fresh environments, evolving from simply pulling around boxes to make platforms and rafts and settlements, as the Robocat doesn't swim, to using giant fleshy water bags to drain or flood murky swamps, and navigating cold and sterile machine vessels, full of force fields and electrified surfaces. So there are solid foundations in place, but Planet of Lana struggles to differentiate itself. It can feel sluggish to control, and the marketing is a touch misleading. The first and I think biggest issue for such a cinematic, story-heavy game is the familiar setting in the narrative arc. If you've watched any movie or series or played any prior game that dealt with a primitive civilization in a sci-fi setting, the big reveal and twist is always the same, and Planet of Lana is no exception. Sticking with the cinematic ambitions, these can sometimes be a drag on the pacing. Often you're expected to just hold down a thumbstick for over a minute while something happens in the background. The intricate animations and movements can make larger puzzles take forever, especially if you've already figured out what you need to do, and there are some unforgiving QTEs inserted into several cutscene-style battles, though at least you can turn these off in the menu. The last thing to touch on are the marketing terms, like an epic sci-fi saga that stretches across centuries and galaxies, program doesn't mean predictable, or everything isn't a fight. All of these suggest a scope, degree of dynamism, and player agency that doesn't really exist. You don't play through past events, there's only one viable solution to every puzzle or enemy encounter, and rare non-hostile encounters just play out as cutscenes. Now despite those criticisms, I did enjoy my brief time with Planet of Lana. It felt a little too familiar, structurally and thematically, but the ending was satisfying and it didn't outstay its welcome. It's a game that won't stick around in your memory for very long, but it is perfect for fans of classic platformers that enjoy a tale told through stylish cutscenes, detailed animations and environmental storytelling rather than bloated scripts and hours of voice acting. It's got puzzles that force you to explore, observe and plan, while dealing with threats requires pattern recognition, distraction and careful timing. And perhaps most importantly, it has far more generous checkpointing than the classic games it takes inspiration from. If you've got this far, please consider giving the video a like and maybe subscribing to our channel as it helps us grow.